before I started showing you how to set up your videos, I have to tell you all of the timestamps are going to be in the description. So skip around if you want. You don't need to watch this whole entire video. Still though, I spent a lot of effort on this. So if you want to, check out the whole video. So let's start with hardware. I'm going to teach you guys how to set up your hand cam with basically no budget. We're using this. It's a phone stand. It works. You grab a take book. You put it under your phone stand. And it's this is pretty much how I recorded all my hand cam for a while. Now that's how you use your Python crash course book. But the problem with this one is if you're playing games like me, uh, playing Osu Mania, where you're smashing a keyboard really hard, there's going to be shake. You can see that in my older videos, where there's crazy camera shake when I'm, you know, jacking, when I'm playing jack maps. There's actually a solution for this. I'll grab some small boxes. Alright, I got my small boxes. These are basically what my switches came with. So you do it like this, that way it's less shaky doesn't shake as much it's still gonna shake but it helps but if you can this is always better there's no shake and this is only three dollars so yeah that's pretty much how you set up your camera let's cut to the software segment welcome to the software segment i'm recording this in the next day so i'm wearing a different shirt now the first thing you need to do is to set up your phone camera as the webcam you have two ways to do this. The first one is to just record on your phone and then record on your PC, your laptop, and then sync up both footages together in editing. That's the most simplest method, the most primitive method. There isn't really much for me to teach you, except there is this really easy way to sync up two audios that everyone uses, and that's to have a loud clap in the beginning of your footage and you just sync up that clap once that is synced the whole footage should be synced up you won't need to worry about audio off syncing or anything now the second method is to just use what i'm using right now this is the joint cam obs i'm only using joint cam obs for this video and i'll explain why in a minute why i don't use droid cam obs later but to set up droid cam obs you need to download two things this is the droid cam obs plugin for obs the link for download will be in the description and then the second thing is to download it on your phone play store app store whatever and you should just follow the instructions here and inside your phone app there's going to be instructions as well so just follow those if you're really struggling to set it up there are video tutorials out there search them up i mean you already search up this tutorial you have no trouble searching up other tutorials you should be able to set it up let me explain why i don't normally use this for my osu gameplay the first reason is latency you might not feel it as bad in this video because i had to sync it up in editing where i need to pull back the audio since there's heavy audio latency so when i say things when i do something and you you will hear the sound first before you see it in the video i had to sync it up and post and that is you know really bad if you're an osu player you play rhythm games where timing is one of the main things about the game so i will not recommend doing that but if you're just playing maybe rpgs or maybe it's just something that doesn't require super precise timing or anything your viewers won't get annoyed by a delayed audio footage then it should be fine and also if you want to you can sync it up in post but there's the second problem and the second problem is stuttering i'm not sure how this will be in other phones because i'm currently using a really bad phone this is the realme 3 pro that i bought for less than $250 less than 1000 ringgit three years ago it only has a micro usb port so it's it's quite outdated maybe newer phones won't have this problem it will become stuttery if you record for long periods of time you will see that in my hardware segment it's pretty obvious there are stutters you don't really want that if you're playing again fast-paced games games that require precision timing and all that it will annoy your viewers but again if it's you're playing some casual slow paced game then it doesn't really matter now here's the second thing 
is your video layout. This is very important. You need to make sure you're using the layout that I'm using like this, something like this. Why do you need to use the video layout that I'm using? Now this only applies to really low spec machines like mine. If you already have a good enough PC, well first of all you wouldn't even be watching this video. And second of all, this is just unnecessary especially when you can see earlier on the layout has its drawbacks. You can't really see the hand movement. You just copy this layout from Hugo Frost which yes I did early on but then I discovered something. So let me explain why this helps with your performance, especially if you're an Osu player with a low spec machine. And I'm going to do that with a piece of A4 paper. So imagine this is your whole display. Since you have a low spec machine, I'll just use the 720p dimension. So it's 1280 by 720. This is your whole hand cam. And this will be your gameplay footage. Okay, I, I'm not using a ruler because I don't want to have Sharpie on my ruler. So you're using only half the screen. So how many pixels is this? It's half. So it's 640. Oh my god, I can't write. 640 by 360. So you can just record your footage on half the resolution while you're, in the end your video is still going to be maybe 720p or even 1080p it still applies to 1080p which will save you a lot of performance so you just record your hand cam because if you're using the first method the primitive method you just record the hand cam on your phone maybe on 1080p and then you can record your gameplay footage which is what uses your horrible pc and you can just record it at half the resolution which will really really improve your performance believe me it does but again, if you're playing a game with huge movements, this is not recommended because your hand will just, you know, like, let me turn it on. Use your hands, see, you'll just be blocked. And also you definitely need to position your camera angle. Maybe just, you need to get creative with your camera angle to make this work as well. This is just what I'm using because I'm a Mania player. So, this is how all my videos are like because you only need to show your keyboard. So this is perfect. Now it's gonna be different for everyone else. You will need to get creative, you know, just look at Hugo Frost's camera angle and go from there if you're a standard player. If you're a Mania player, well, good luck. I recommend going more than 50% of the screen though because you kind of want people to see your gameplay. For me, I record on 540p and I just shrink it to this size and just like that all of my videos are 1080p so that's how you hide your low spec machines capabilities now I'm going to go full screen on my screen right now because I'm gonna show you some settings just you record it on whatever resolution you want I can't change it right now because I'm recording and for FPS if you are playing rhythm games please for the love of god record on 60 FPS it really makes a difference especially if you are playing mania 60 and 20 FPS is huge difference if you are playing on a slightly higher scroll speed and you record on 30 FPS it's going to look like shit it look horrible so please record on 60 FPS and again as I've said earlier if your machine is not strong enough to record on 60 fps on whatever resolution that you might be using then just lower the resolution you know if you can't do half of 1080p then just do half of 720p which is 360 there's no way your machine cannot record on 360p 60 fps there's just no way your pc is going to be good enough for that unless your pc is from like the 1900s or something so the next thing is your output settings now for streaming don't even think about streaming your pc is too shit you cannot stream but if you're able to stream well just go look up some quality tutorial videos there's a lot of them but for recording this is what i use for a 720p monitor recording on 540p on intel integrated graphics for this crf thing this is basically controlling your videos quality the higher the number is the worse it is and the lower it is the better the quality for low spec gamers i'll recommend 20 to 25 and i'm using 23 
So for this one, I just set to super fast. If you want more in-depth explanations on these settings, you should just look for videos that is dedicated to OBS settings. So another thing you need to know is how to edit your videos while having a dog shit machine. Now I use Wondershare Filmora that you know, I somehow got for free. I'm not gonna say how, but I somehow got it for free. The full unlocked version somehow. You can use any other editing software and there will be a lot of YouTube tutorials that will teach you how to do it. And Wondershare Filmora is one of the easiest programs to learn. So that's why I used it. You can do a lot of the simple shit on it, but if you want to do more advanced things, then maybe you should use something more professional. But I've tried a professional program once and I don't even know where to start, so I'm gonna stick with this one. So here's my tip on people that are trying to edit on a potato machine. This is what I do. This is my video projects folder. This is where all of my video project files go to. This is the current video that you're watching. You might realize that there's more than one project. And there's going to be a third one later on for the software part. And why is that? Because your machine is not good enough to actually edit the whole video from start to finish. Now, if your video is really simple, like a mania play where you just sync up both footages and crop the beginning and the end out and that's it, one file is going to be enough. But if you're making a video like this, where there's a lot of elements, pictures, all that shit, a machine like this will not make it. So this is what I do. I separate parts of the videos into different projects and then I render out each of these projects and then I open another project to put all of them together in order and that's how you see the video that you are watching right now. I use three different projects to do this because my machine will die if I do everything in one project and then a fourth one to put all three together including my 1% Osu Mania skill 99% editing skill video I spread that into four projects if I remember correctly so this is one of the tricks that you are doing it's going to be a bit tedious annoying you know when you have something wrong and you might need to render all four projects again that's gonna be really annoying but you know if you're looking up a video like this to learn how to make youtube videos while having a shit laptop it's out of passion right no matter what tedium you need to go through i feel like you can do it i mean i made it so you can probably do it okay so you have set up everything your hand cam your video layout all of that here are the osu settings you need to record on a really low spec machine now this segment only applies if you are someone that is using the first method of recording your hand cam that I've mentioned earlier, which is to record your hand cam separately and then record your gameplay footage and then sync it up and pose. So if your PC is good enough to rec actually record live plays, to record your hand cam and the game at the same time while not needing to destroy your game's performance until the point you can't even play, well, you should skip this part. This part is not for you, but for the people that have the same dog shit specs as I do. Here's the first thing that you need to know. You're not going to be able to record live plays. You're recording your replays. So you play the game first with your optimal settings, the settings that you're used to. You just play the game and then afterwards you record the replay of the play. You want to know how to open the replay. You just do this. I just turn on replay. Now, before you do that though, here's the first thing you need to do. F7, make sure it's on power saving. Why? Because power saving limits the game's frame rate to 120 FPS and that limits the resource that the game can use. So the lower the frame rate, the better. And you will say that lower frame rate affects your performance. Well, that's fine because you're just recording your replay. When you are actually setting the play, you're playing on your optimal settings. And then now when you're recording 120 FPS, it affects nothing, especially when your video is only 60 FPS, it doesn't affect anything. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, some people might ask why not V-Sync? V-Sync limits the frame rate to 60 FPS. The problem with V-Sync is it really destroys OBS and any recording. If you have watched streamers and all that, you'll see that OBS is often the reason why the games might be lagging and everything. And once they turn off V-Sync, it's all of a sudden fixed. So you don't want to use V-Sync. You want to use power saving mode, which is the lowest your frame rate can go without turning on V-Sync. So that's the first thing. Second thing, which is the more obvious one, I feel like everyone already does this just 
go to detail and turn everything off i feel like people already have this off by default so after this all you need to do is just go to the map that you want to record the replay of so for example you want to record a play of the worst ranked map in existence you just do this and click on replay and once you click on replay i'm not going to do it right now because i'm recording with my hand cam and everything is going to be horrible once you actually click on replay you can press h to hide the replay overlay another thing you need to keep in mind is that when you're actually recording the replay with power saving mode on and all of the settings that i've mentioned earlier it's going to look horrible in game it's going to look horrible while you're recording but after you have finished the recording and you actually play back your footage and you actually watch the video file that you record it's actually not that bad i don't really know why but what you see of your game is not representative of what the video will look like at least that's how it is for me i'm not sure how it is for everyone else so that's the end of the video before you go on and record your first gaming video your first osu play hear me out i'm going to be getting a new gaming PC soon. I'm no longer gonna be part of the Intel integrated graphics gang, I suppose. I'm no longer gonna be a low spec gamer. So, this is kind of my, uh, I suppose, love letter to the low spec gamer people that wants to make some gaming YouTube videos. All of these people out there. This is going to be probably the last video I make on this laptop. And I have to say, if you have the thought, you have the passion to make videos even though you have such a horrible laptop that you're looking up a tutorial like this that even no matter how bad your laptop is no matter how bad your pc is your passion still cannot be suppressed it really shows how passionate you are about making these videos and i think everyone should be able to make these videos so i hope my video helped you in doing that in recording your first gaming video if you have enjoyed this video only i think six percent of you are subscribed so if you guys think this is good please subscribe i'm gonna be making more of these voice videos and i'm gonna be making more tutorials on these you know weird little niche things that i've noticed there hasn't been any youtube videos that are talking about it so yeah that's about it like subscribe and all that shit i will see you in another video